So the CCTV happened, and, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Magic gems, resurrection, and cacti gas? On the surface, this campaign seems to be more answers than questions, but look a little deeper and things start to get a lot more complex. Like, why does the park exist now if it was destroyed 30 years ago? What's up with all the inconsistencies in the timeline? And most importantly, why is Spike summoning ghosts? Today, we're going to be answering all these questions and more, so stay tuned. I'm Eterna, today we're going to get to the bottom of this and below, and welcome to Sub-Zero. The CCTV ended with an unsettling crescendo, where every single monitor went dead silent, leaving nothing but the electrical buzz of static on the flickering screens. Save for one, where that smile that we found so adorable is instead turned away at the fire's burning frontier world to ash. That is, until he raised his arms, and from the ground came an eerie green gas, as silhouettes slowly began to arise from the mist, and people are making fart jokes. You know, I really gotta feel bad for the writers. But jokes aside, what exactly is going on here? Because that's more than green gas. And if you take a closer look, we can see something coming out of the gas that vaguely resembles Spike. But they aren't exactly him. They're ghostly and transparent, like they're spirits of the dead. And while I know this is going to sound a bit crazy, but I think it's exactly that. Some sort of cacti ghosts. Because speaking of spirits, we know of a certain blonde haired child who happens to be obsessed with anything and everything supernatural. And who's he obsessed with more than anyone else? That's right, Spike. And I think Gus actually plays a major role in all of this. I mean, his design is based off the statue in the Investor video, which is more or less the lifeblood of Star Park lore. And see those balloons he's holding? Well, follow the Bread Trail pack, and you can find these exact same balloons on the Star Park Tepe's website, with a very interesting caption. Still inflated with original air. Seems like a weird thing to point out, doesn't it? And there's a reason for that. I think these balloons hold none other than... Poison gas? Oh, hey Michael! And yeah, that's right. You made several theories breaking down Gus, but you said it first. Glad to see you agree. After all, what other air would be important enough to be mentioned by the webmaster? And if the green gas is made of spirits, then it makes perfect sense as to why Gus's balloons drop ghosts when they hit an enemy and pop. But hold the phone. In previous theories, I said that the green gas was radioactive, just like we're shown in the 8-bit minigame, so wouldn't that contradict earlier theories? I don't think so. While the art of ghost hunting isn't exactly an objective science, a quick Google search of the tools ghost hunters use brings up none other than Geiger counters, used to measure fluctuations in radiation. As some paranormal believers have claimed, ghosts have radioactive effects on their surrounding environment. Which means that both can be true. It could be radiation from the toxicity in the park, or it could be what we see in the last timecode. I don't think the options are mutually exclusive. Sure, it makes sense that the green gas is coming out of the golf ball shaped building, assuming it contains a nuclear reactor, but there are also places where it makes less sense for it to be uranium gas, like pouring out of the tombstones in Mortis Mortuary, or just kinda hovering around the ghost station at all times. But if these are literally the souls of the dead, then it makes perfect sense as to why it's found in all these spooky places. Exactly, and this theory also explains how Gus's balloons are alive. In his old description, Gus followed Spooky the balloon dog, almost like it was able to move on its own accord. Same thing with the balloon he attacks with. Its mouth moves and snickers in its introductory animation, almost like it's sentient, which is definitely confusing until you pair it with the idea that he's filled with green gas, aka spirits. They're sentient because the balloons are physically possessed. And remember time to explain? Well, if you look at the background, it physically picks up Shelly and fights with her, until she's able to shoot it off and drop it to the ground. Pretty sure vaporized uranium isn't going to be able to do that. It's like it has a mind of its own, and, well, that's because it does. All this talk of souls and spirits brings up a pretty big dilemma. People physically can't die in Star Park, and if people can't die, then how are their ghosts? One of the challenges posed to the dev team when making lore is making sure that there's a scientific explanation to any supernatural element they cook up. Gus's original design was a shadow priest, but was changed a bit because ghosts aren't exactly scientific. They're paranormal, something beyond science. And the first time I heard that, I couldn't help but remember a well-known quote from science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And this statement holds a lot of truth. It basically says that anything we see as magic is really just science that we don't understand. For example, if you gave a peasant from the 18th century a phone, they'd probably think it's a magic brick because they don't understand the technological processes going on in something so far from the future. And the same principle can be applied to our situation. Maybe the supernatural is far more natural than we think. 
Do you remember the last video where it was established that the people in the real world are having their minds projected across realities and into brawlers? Well, what happens when those minds don't have a brawler to go into? When those spirits don't have skins? Well, I think it's exactly what we're seeing in this situation. What if the mind and soul are synonymous here? And the soul is literally just a way of referring to something that they can't understand. Remember, what does the webmaster say in their coded message? SOS, save our souls. And that should be taken very literally. It also explains why they say, keep your bright soul. That's not just a grammatical error. They're telling us to keep our minds from being sent into the game. What does Bo say, the brawler that talks most about spirits? There is no death, only a change of worlds. We probably lucked right into that one, but hey, it's not death, it's just the mind being transported into another realm of existence. In this section from WKBRL, The Voice That Hears You, we're told a lot of very strange stuff, such as... Why would you ever want to leave? We're in space, man. You are not light years away from another sentient being. You are here on solid, happy ground. Stay tethered to WKBRL. Project yourself onto the outer reaches of the infinite galaxy. With laser focus, you can find yourself shining brighter than any star there never was. Because you're tuned in to WKBRL. And you are drifting through space. space. And I don't think the body is actually in space. It's a really strange thing to mention unless you consider this thing called astral projection. Astral meaning stars and projection meaning to send out. And these cliffs make a lot more sense when you put it in this context, that people are having their minds projected to another world and into brawlers. It's why this voice is telling you to stay tethered to the original body. And what follows Colette in her hypercharge? Her spirit. It's the mind separating from the body. And it's the same thing for several other brawlers as well. Let's review. A shadowy duplicate that copies your every move. A shadowy duplicate that copies your every move. A shadowy duplicate that copies your every move. Do you think that's coincidence? Because I certainly don't. Listen to Marzio's tone when he announces it. Colette gets help from her spirit. If that's not hiding some deeper lore implications, then I don't know what is. It's the same thing with Lola Super. What does it say? She releases her ego, which in reality is the physical manifestation of her spirit. She is just channeling it through her necklace. And when you compare the two, you can really start to see the resemblance because it's the exact same phenomenon happening in both cases. And that's not even mentioning Starcade Breakdown. This is his soul, the same one that's referenced at the beginning of the game. It's an echo of himself. And we can go even further, because hey, it's the same thing with Tara's gadget and star powers too. What are they called? Shades. In mythology, shades are the spirits of the dead. But once again, how can these be spirits if people can't die in Star Park? Because they're the minds of people from other worlds. It's why they look so much like the other three examples, and why they come from a quote, other dimension. And what else is another dimension? That's right, the Shadow Realm. Just like the shadowy version of other brawlers. It's this parallel universe which people are transported to and trapped in, just like Brawl Stars. And it gets even weirder when you consider that the indicator for a super on the other side is essentially the same one as Squad Busters, which is all about brawlers going to another dimension. So I would not be surprised if we eventually get some future lore connections there. And finally, Gene supports this too, with his personality splitting from his lamp. His mind is trapped inside the teapot, while the soul is, well, Gene. What are genies? They're spirits. If you look at the description, it says most people think he's just a man in a costume, but then they never elaborate about it, which is incredibly sus. Remember, there's only science within Brawl Stars, so how is a mythological creature able to exist here? I don't think it has to be said again. It's mirroring the splitting of the soul. But what exactly is splitting here? I mean, yes, obviously the soul, but there might be more to it. As we've covered before, radiation seems to drive people mad, but why is that? Well, what if it's essentially somehow able to separate the, for lack of a scientific term, evil from a person's body and bring it to the surface? Lola's spirit isn't just a spirit, it's her ego, this incredibly toxic part of her personality. Why else would it have sharp teeth? And shadows just typically have a negative connotation in pop culture. If the soul does split, it splits into multiple parts, the good and the bad, and the bad rises to the surface, driving people mad. 
Now, I should say, I don't completely know if these are two separate ideas here, whether there's just souls coming from another universe, or in addition, the soul is essentially splitting, because that's kind of what we see in WKBRL 3.0, where the weatherman is news, weather, and science. And you could also argue the same thing with Kairos Tim, where there's two to three people here, the so-called skin of Kairos, the person underneath the deepfake, and the person who's actually voicing them. Maybe I'm overanalyzing, but it would explain why we're able to have three versions of Tara's spirit. And lastly, this whole supernatural element would explain why objects and robots are able to come alive in the first place. Because I'm not gonna lie, radiation causing things to come alive isn't exactly the most scientific thing in the world. I mean, if it's just radiation, that doesn't explain how Apet is able to have a soul. But if it's these spirits possessing a host, just like they do to brawlers, then it at least makes a little bit more sense. Now, I should say I'm not fully convinced that the souls are in the gems, because that would imply that they're alive, and sentient rocks, Psh, what is this, Clash Royale? Instead, I think it's essentially a point where these two worlds meet. If you remember back to the Investor video where the director is going through the gem mines, he begins to spaz out, which looks really strange from our perspective, but if you look closely at the background, it's almost like he's going through some sort of purple wormhole, which as other theorists established before, are the gateways to these other dimensions, which would explain why his atoms look like they're being physically rearranged. They're just like Cordelius's mushrooms, the same ones which have been affected by the gems, which are somehow able to transfer transport people's minds to other dimensions. So to recap, it's highly likely that the green gas contains spirits, and by extension, spirits aren't actually ghosts but rather the wandering minds of the people from the real world, that is at least when they aren't already in another brawler or object. When they find a host, it brings that object to life, creating a brawler. In addition, gems may be the key allowing this process to happen, and are somehow the meeting point where worlds start to blur, which may even have something to do with the singularity that's been talked about before in previous videos, and aid in interdimensional travel. But hold on, because we're not out of things to talk about. After all, we also have a timeline to look at, because if we assume that this is the same park we saw in the investor video, then we can put them on a timeline. So let's just say the latter takes place somewhere in the mid-1900s. But then things start getting bizarre, like why are Nita and Leon kids in the mid-1900s and then still kids around 30 years later? Why does 8-Bit exist in the investor video when he only came alive in 1995? And why are any robots sentient in the investor video for that matter, since we never see any before that point in the CCTV? Not to mention the gems, they shouldn't even be around right now because the park is totally normal before 1995, on the exact day the gems are unleashed into the park. And we're not even going to talk about the perk layout right now because that's worth its entire own video. And I won't lie, it feels like no matter which angle you try and come from, things just don't line up. Which brings up the worst possible question, is the investor video even canon? An entire campaign of lore completely erased from history? And truth be told, I was genuinely starting to believe that, that they were resetting everything and starting over. But thankfully, I had forgotten something that another theorist had to remind me of. Danny said it himself, that the investor video was staying part of the story after it was privated on their YouTube channel. Uh, just curious, but what was the reason why the Star Park brawl talk, the gift shop animation and investor video were removed? <laughs> I, I picked the one exactly because I wanted to explain. <laughs> so we put it out there, we uh, had what we wanted to. Uh, we receive what we wanted to put out there, like the people understanding what's the lore. Uh, reactions to this video are still there, so like that's a thing that still exists. We are not like erasing history, and we want to that this is the lore. Like we are not like removing the this part of the story. This is still exists. It's basically like our rights to use the video <laughs> expired, mm -hmm. and that's it. But um, yeah, the big pieces might not live forever. Maybe in your hearts or in your actual videos. <laughs> and sure enough, there we have it. Direct confirmation that the investor video is still canon. And a reminder that this was just 33 days before the CCTV was released. And trust me, it takes a lot longer than 33 days to create something of this caliber. If you remember, they've been planning this for at least two updates. To Why ruin the Maybe surprise? lore. Maybe there's something to do with lore. Mm. Maybe. Not, Maybe. Wait, wait oh. not in the next update, so like, <laughs> but there's something related with lore, but not in the next update. There's something related with lore in the next update. Oh, but, but there's now, always now something we have to related. communicate with our eyes here. Yeah. <laughs> and if they were really striking it from the story, why are there so many mentions of stuff from old lore? We already told you, this is normal. The spew tag inscribed onto the desk and the old Star Park theme song that plays on loop. 
<laughs> I always wanted to be able to listen to the song on Spotify, but not every 30 seconds. So good news, the investor video is still canon. Bad news, the inconsistency still exists. And let me tell you, I've personally been struggling to wrap my head around it, but from what I can tell, there are two possibilities, aside from them just straight up retconning a whole ton of stuff. The first is what Kairos pointed out, that there are time loops going on in the voice that hears you. Each and every 24 hours, the park resets and allows the firework disaster to happen all over again the following day, because I highly doubt they have enough time to repair all the damage within that 24 hour period. And it's the same case with the CCTV. But then why hasn't the CCTV reset yet? Time is progressing in this universe. It's not the same day. That's proven by the park staying destroyed as the months go by. It also doesn't explain any of the inconsistencies or why the loop isn't happening in the older era of the park. So I don't think this is the answer. Precisely. So instead, what if the CCTV takes place in a parallel universe? One where the same events occur as the ones in the investor video, just in a slightly different form. Leon and Nita can still be kids in this world because the only thing that's changed is the year all of these events take place. Green gas is leaked into the park not through a nuclear reactor in a spherical building, but through Spike himself. A minecart crashes into Bull's Diner not because of cold, but because of the exploding bumper carts. And the park burns down not through spewed, but through the brawlers accidentally starting fires during their fights. And that explains the 1010 fires. See, if you remember back to the days of WKBRL, there were a series of events that foreshadowed something was going to change. First, the smoke in the investor video, secondly, the 1010 on the burnt penguin plush, and finally, a repeating 101020 on the radio's indicator, which meant October 10th. The same day, WKBRL changed the sounds of crackling fire. And take a closer look at Rick's final message, the one where he's talking about the fires that are burning down Star Park. When was it made? 1010. That would be one heck of a coincidence, but it's obviously a reference to the fires that burned down the other star park. Not on October 10th, but still on 1010. Similar events, different causes, same result. Then what happens next? The park is destroyed, right? Well, I don't think it's completely over, because we are missing a few pieces in the story. For example, all the guests are gone and the park has been shut down and boarded up. All except for the brawlers. In this timeline of events, it seems like they've all been replaced by robots, and it seems like they're the ones keeping the park going. They ride the rides, they're operating the Megapig factory, and Belle and Sam seem to hate them for whatever reason. Well, maybe someone, or a duo of people, built the robot factory to start mass producing them in order to undo all the damage caused in the CCTV, but then something switched in their programming, causing them to all go rogue and gain sentience. Once again, that's all speculation, but there is a gap of information here, and I do think it's worth discussing. It also explains the robot designs in what is probably Colt or Sam's room, and Bell and Sam's from Data if they were betrayed. Not to mention, we also don't know what happened to Rick, and before anything else, I'd like to say that I don't think RT is Rick. I've heard the argument on both sides, and let me say why I disagree. First off, gems do a couple of things. They make people go insane, mutate animals, give ironic powers to people in close proximity, and finally, they bring things to life. We never see them combine two objects or people. On the first watch, it kinda looks like this guy merges with the crow, but the gigantic wing extends before he gets taken down. And then we see what appears to be this guy later holding a various array of signs, and missing his trademark leather jacket. And how do we see the gems bring objects to life? Direct physical contact. In 8-Bit's example, he had the gems put on top of him, just like the TV monitor, the same one that went missing when the RT rules was written in the logbook, which seems to imply that this screen is literally RT. Plus, it's worth noting how this is written, big bold letters and red marker. If it was written in this deep blue ink which Rick writes in, I could see the argument, but because there's really only ever a change in color when the next person comes in and uses a different pen, it seems to imply that this is an entirely different user. And lastly, it seems like RT is on Star Park's side. The way he watches over people seems to be more malicious than anything else, and the way he talks about Star Corp in his voice lines really seems to imply that he's an ally of theirs, and a force acting against Spewed, which I think Rick is actually a part of, and the reason I think that is mostly because of what Spewed stands for, Star Park Union of Distressed Employees. And in case you missed it, Rick definitely seems to be a distressed employee. And this is the entry that was written on the exact same day the Spewed tag was inscribed onto the desk. And considering we never ever see anyone else write in that logbook before this was put here, or have any other indication that another person was in the security room, 
I think this was put here by none other than Rick himself. So the statement still stands. We don't know what happened to Rick. He could have escaped, or he could turn up in the future as a new brawler. But unfortunately for him, considering the current track record of people making it out, well, let's just say things are looking pretty bleak for Rick. After all, it is the place you never want to leave, but at the end of the day, only time will tell. So let's cross our fingers and hope for the best. And as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, make sure to have a day as bright as the stars.